Can we mention how that impacts the actual marketing strategy? Because now you uh, identified your ideal customer, you know exactly the pain and the tolerance, uh, you uh -huh. adjust your offer to that talks exactly to that audience, how that improves marketing campaigns in terms of click-through rate, the lead generation, uh -huh. making those leads targeted and making it easy for salespeople to close those. Right. So often the insight from the research is the key thing that you need in order to adapt your targeting. So who you're targeting with this campaign, which could be organic or paid, but you do need a list of people that you're going to reach out to and, and reach with your message. So targeting, message, and then offer. All three of those things you're going to want to fine tune based on the data that you get from your research. So you don't want to skip that step. The other reason why I do lots of surveys is because often my clients, they want to be marketing, you know, next week. So we got to move quickly and surveys, you can operationalize quickly, whereas doing lots of phone calls and running in an event or a focus group, it just takes longer. So. There's a lot of decisions that need to make, be made based on the timeline, based on the constraints of when we need to be in market selling and the resources that we have to do the research. So these are all factored into the right approach to research. And that really helps us fine tune the positioning and the offer stack and our go-to-market or campaign. And yeah, that's what it looks like. Can you share before and after anything that comes to mind, like without again, revealing the company's name, if you don't have to, here's where I found them after making these adjustments. That's the change that was impacting the click-through rate, cost per lead, cost per sale. Yeah, sure. So I do a lot of work with direct to consumer brands, e-commerce brands that are selling products, physical and digital products. And by and large, conversion rates tend to be about 1% when people start working with me. So one out of every hundred visitors to their Shopify web shop will be a, a purchaser and a customer. And once we go through my process, do the research, fine tune the positioning and messaging and offer stack, we're able to increase on average from 1% to 2.5%. So that's a significant difference in terms of conversion, sales, profit. And then with further testing and iterating, we can then step up to 3% and over that. And just so you know, a benchmark of good would be over 2%. 1% would be average to poor and over... 3%, you're in the range of, you're starting to get into the range of great. And there are some clients I work with who are up to 8%, which is where you would see performance on Amazon, for example, and because they are so well optimized. So those are some of the benchmarks and some of the transformations that I help my clients with going through that process. Mm -hmm. Who's your typical client? Do you narrow down to a specific vertical or it's a wide spectrum? It is a wide range. So I do work with everything from drinks and food brands to health and wellness and fitness services. But I've also worked on car companies and enterprise technology services. So there's such a spectrum. And that's just because I've been doing this for a really long time. I started working in the industry three decades ago. So I've worked with all kinds of brands and companies. And my focus these days is the mid-size companies. And I also do work with some enterprise brands. They seem to have the most appetite to grow in our current market which is more competitive and there's less budgets. So companies are having to do more with less. And mm -hmm. that's really why someone like myself who brings the framework and the set of experiences and the benchmarks can help 
companies with success and in today's market, which is tougher. So you do need that rigor and, and the framework to really help a lot. Yeah. 